We are now ready for the internal brain anatomy. So uh, using this model, and then I'm also gonna go up and see if you can't figure out what we're looking at with on um, this side where they just painted in the structures that would be, this would be the uh, left cerebral hemisphere. This is the right cerebral hemisphere that I took out of there. And again, this top part is the cerebrum. So now let's go ahead and identify these structures. So to separate the right and left cerebral hemisphere, we have to make a sagittal section down through that longitudinal fissure. So that's what this is, is a sagittal section. And so this strip that you see right along here, it has a number five on it. That strip consists of white matter. What is the name of this strip? This is the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum consists of commissural fibers or commissural tracts. Commissural fibers connect regions in the right cerebral hemisphere with regions in the left cerebral hemisphere. So let's say we wanted to connect regions within the same cerebral hemisphere. So perhaps maybe this region connected to this region. Those are called association fibers or association tracks. Then we have tracks that will actually connect regions in the brain with regions in the spinal cord. And we, we work on actually drawing some of those pathways in lecture. But a track that connects a region in the brain with a region in the spinal cord or vice versa are known as projection tracks. And those tracks are made of myelinated axons. So back to this region of the internal brain. So this was the corpus callosum. What is the name of this little strip that you see here? This is the fornix. If this were, if this gap was open and I could get my pencil down in there, what ventricle would this be? The lateral ventricle. There is a thin membrane that is suspended between the two lateral ventricles and that would be located here. Septum pellucidum. Okay, so the lateral ventricle contains cerebral spinal fluid. Cerebral spinal fluid is produced by the choroid plexus in each ventricle. The choroid plexus is a knot of capillaries that will filter blood plasma to produce cerebrospinal fluid, which then enters the ventricle. This lateral ventricle is connected to the third ventricle, which is in this region, through an interventricular foramen. So that is being represented by that opening that you see right there. Let's go ahead and identify these brain structures, and then I'm going to talk to you about the flow of cerebrospinal fluid as well. So this region of the brain that you see right here that has that dot right in the center, this is gray matter. Name this region of the brain. This is the thalamus. The thalamus is our major uh, sensory relay station. The thalamus will receive sensory, uh, path sensory pathways will stop at the thalamus. The thalamus will determine pleasant or unpleasant, and then the thalamus will route it. After it synapses, it will route it to the appropriate region on the cortex for discrimination. So that's why it's referred to as the relay station. It is made of gray matter. The region just below it here, name this region, number 10. That is the hypothalamus. The structure that is the dot right in the middle of the thalamus connects the right and left thalamuses or the right and left sides of the thalamus name this structure. This is known as the intermediate mass or the interthalamic adhesion. And then other areas that we've talked about um, from the external brain that we can see here as well. What would this region be called where that number 12, 11 is? This is the midbrain. Number 12 is showing the pons. And here at number 13, this would be the medulla oblongata. Okay, good. So again, if we look at that flow of cerebral spinal fluid, um, I think I'll actually do that in the next video. But we'll start at the lateral ventricles, and we'll work down, and then we'll work out and around the cerebrum, as well as down and up the spinal cord.